So yes, the Microfreak now has a vocoder mode. Artorio were kind enough to send across this rather nifty white vocoder edition Microfreak, which comes packaged with this handy gooseneck microphone. Uh, but the good news is that the vocoder capabilities are all packaged up as a firmware update. So if you have a normal uh, Microfreak, you will be getting the vocoder as well. You also don't need to use this particular microphone um, and we'll take a look later on in the video at setting up other microphones to use with the vocoder as well. So in this short video, we will take a look at setting up the vocoder. So setting up the microphone, whether it's this one that comes with the vocoder edition or another microphone. Uh, we'll take a look at the various parameters that are available to us and talk about how a vocoder works, explore some of those sounds and also look at running things other than our voice through a vocoder as well, because that's kind of fun as well. So to make use of the vocoder, once you have installed the new firmware, you're going to want to come across to uh, initialize patch and uh, you want to scroll your type knob all the way across till what we see vocoder. Now, if you're not using the microphone uh, that comes with the uh, vocoder edition, or if you're using um, an external source when you do this it might say warning mic required and it won't let you actually come into the uh, vocoder setting i'll show you how to get around with that in just a second when we come into the utility menu because the next thing you want to do is make sure that you have enough gain in order to make everything work so if we go into the utility menu uh, and once you've installed the new uh, firmware upgrade you will now have a uh, item in here called mic settings so if we go into mic settings we have settings for mic gain a noise gate and mic detection now if you were getting the error message saying warning uh microphone should be connected uh, that's probably because um the connection that you're using to get in to the uh micro freak is not the same as this microphone uses and if you go in here and you turn that to off that should solve that problem. I'll leave it on for a second because I'm using this one. Uh, so mic gain is probably the most important uh, thing here. Out of the factory, this is set all the way down at, at like minus 12 and um, you won't hear anything. Like that's nowhere near enough gain to actually make any noise through the vocoder. So you'll be playing and you'll be tapping and talking and there'll be nothing coming out. Uh, I found that um, for this microphone, around 40 decibels is about right uh, that was what i was using on the intro uh, so that's what we'll use here but it goes up quite a way so if you have like a um dynamic microphone that needs a lot of gain for example you can apply a fair amount of gain to it right at the end there we have auto gain um which works okay i found it was a little bit low with this one i don't know um it might be okay, you can kind of hear me there. So it is applying a fair bit of gain, but um, yeah, like you can see, I'm, no, I'm not nowhere near the microphone now and there's enough gain here for it to be picking me up in the room, which is um, pretty useful if you want to talk from a while away. I don't know, but anyway, about 40 seems to work well when you're close up to it, uh, much higher in it sort of, um, clips uh, we also have a noise gate here which allows us to apply a noise gate so if you do have things um, with a very high gain and you want to make sure you're not picking up any noise in the room you can set a threshold here um, but I'm just gonna leave that off uh, for the purposes of this video so the microphone itself actually plugs into the headphone input I'll just yank that out for a second um, uh, the microphone that comes with the uh, vocoder edition um, has a headphone input here so you're getting both the microphone and uh the headphone uh it's molded to fit around the back here but what i would say is if you're using this one just make sure you are actually pushing it all the way in and it's um square uh, because a couple of times i thought it wasn't working and the reason was it it just wasn't plugged all the way in so do actually make sure you plug the microphone all the way in seems obvious but it's not 
always clear because of the way this is molded. Um, if you can see, you might not be able to quite see that, but this connection is a tip ring ring sleeve connection, which is the same sort of thing you get with headsets. So this is a jack from a headset adapter. So this um, allows you to plug in a uh, headphone and a microphone. The sort of thing that you might want to do if you have something like this, which is a gaming headset, which in this case has separate connectors for microphone and headphones. I'm sure a lot of us are working from home at the moment, so these are more commonplace in our homes than maybe they were before. Uh, so in this case, it's quite easy for me to take uh, the microphone there and the headphone there and stick them in the back here and this will work just as well when I talk through the microphone on this headset um, and that's what I'll use for the rest of the video so that you're not constantly looking at my head, top of my head encroaching in the frame. And this kind of adapter is also really useful if you want to get other sources into the microfreak. So let's take a look at these controls and to understand what they're doing, we need to think a little bit about how a vocoder, uh, a, a musical vocoder uh, actually operates. So what a vocoder is doing is it's taking one input, usually a voice, but it doesn't have to be, and splitting it into frequency bands, basically putting a bunch of band pass filters across that sound at different frequencies. Uh, and then what it's going to do for each of those bands is watch the level. So if we split my voice up into multiple bands and I go, ooh, there's going to be different um, profile of which bands are most strongly affected there as opposed to when I go e. okay? So uh, we've basically got envelope followers across each of those bands. So we then have another sound source, usually a synthesizer sound. And we're going to put a bunch of band pass filters across all of those. But now instead of listening to each of those bands, what we're going to do is open those, the level of those bands up. So each of the bands from the incoming signal uh, is going to be affecting each of the bands from the uh, synthesized or carrier signal. So that carrier signal is um, what we're talking about on the wave control. So when I'm talking now with the, oh, turn this down, with the wave control turned all the way down, the waveform that is being vocoded is a sawtooth wave. As we turn it up, it becomes a pulse width with a variable pulse width. So essentially we've got pulse width modulation which will make Nick Bat very, very happy indeed. And right about the top, we start using noise instead of uh, a harmonic wave, which sounds very, very spooky indeed. Yes, very spooky. So this next knob, the timbre knob, is called shift. So uh, when we were thinking about our band pass filters, I'll stop talking through the code for a second. When we were thinking about our bandpass filters before, we had multiple bandpass filters. And with the uh, shift knob in the middle, what's essentially happening is that we have sort of twin bandpass filters. So if I have one bandpass filter at 200 hertz, there'll be one on the carrier signal at 200 hertz. If there's one at 500 hertz, there'll be one at 500 hertz. So everything sort of lines up, which is why, as far as natural goes, the sound here sounds fairly natural. It matches the general uh, timbre of my voice. But as we turn the knob up or down, we're going to shift that second set of filters so they're not corresponding with the input signal, which is going to give the effect of making things sound kind of deeper or more muffled. Or as we go further up, everything's going to sound kind of chipmunky and sped up, even though it's not sped up the transfer of the different frequencies has been shifted around, hence shift. 
so the final knob the shape knob is uh, labeled bandwidth and this is going to affect the bandwidth of the filters on the uh, carrier wave our synthesized wave so as we turn it up it's going to open up those filters and it's going to probably be the uh, most natural sounding and legible usually uh, version of the sound as I turn it down it's going to tighten things up and things are going to get a little bit more synthetic and as we tighten the bandwidth we're also increasing the resonance which is going to start to introduce a very cool kind of ringing as the uh, filters start resonating and then right down at the bottom you can hear that they're really ringing out and you can kind of play the pitch even with the noise with the shift knob now and then right down at the bottom and as we get down to the bottom, we can hear that we have this wonderful ringing quality. And this is going to create a very, 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 very synthetic sound with a lovely resonance. Try to stop yourself singing when you're playing a vocoder. Yes, yes, wonderful. So one of the best features of the Microfreak for me is the mod matrix. So let's just try applying uh, some modulation to some of these sounds here. So probably the most obvious one for me would be to um, apply uh, the timbre, which is our shift to the pressure. So let's just whack that up full there on the matrix. We'll turn the timbre all the way down. And now we can do stuff like this. Probably a little bit too obvious. So let's tame that a little bit. Something like this. Maybe if we turn down or rather turn up the band pass, it won't be so overbearing. But that's quite a nice thing. We are the robots. That sort of thing becomes rather fun. We are the robots. So you can give yourself expression to the voice, almost like a, a filter that's opening up. Well, it kind of is. Multiple filters all moving at the same time. That is quite expressive. Quite expressive. Quite expressive. So another thing we could do on the wave here is if we wanted to get some pulse width modulation, we could... Maybe go over to uh, we're cycling envelope. Go into the wave here. We set our wave down to when it's the saw, and then just go just above that, and we can apply our cycling envelope to the wave parameter because cycling envelope is um, unipolar. It's only going to push it upwards. But it's probably running very very fast at the moment. But we can slow it down a bit. And now we have pulse width modulation on our voice, which is quite cool. Perhaps we should play. Perhaps we should play some chords. We should play some chords. We should play some chords. I think that's pushing up into noise, maybe. We should play some chords. We should play some chords. Fun. Uh, Perhaps one of the things we could try is if we have our bandwidth all the way down here and rather than have this on the um, pressure, perhaps we should have that working with an LFO. So let's take that off the pressure and put it onto an LFO and let's make it go slower, slower, slower and maybe back to one monophonic and it has this really cool um, almost flanger sound to it we can open up the bandwidth and it just sweeps around in a really cool way a really cool way and this is without even touching the filter perhaps we can get it going a little bit further out speed it up and now it's sounding pretty crazy and again we're not even using the filter yet we could add some resonance and have some really interesting stuff happening in the mid-range perhaps very cool very cool 
So to finish off, I've got a Teenage Engineering KO. Just got a little drum beat on it. Lovely jubbly. Uh, and we can plug that in using the same adapter I was using for the headset. Uh, so here it is plugged in to the uh, Micro Freak instead. You can hear nothing at the moment because we're not playing anything, but if I... Play a note there, we can hear that our drum machine is getting vocoded. And this is an amazing way to generate additional parts uh, along with the drum beat that have the rhythm of the drum beat built in, but with uh, a harmonic or melodic idea in there. And of course we can experiment with the different controls here as well. So we can generate, if we have the wave turned up to noise, kind of a uh, additional hi-hatty clappy sound out of what's already there, which is really cool. That would sound great mixed back in. Let's move uh, the timbre out of it. One thing that I found that's quite interesting is if we apply pitch bend, especially with the uh, band width turned down, really cool, almost chorus sound there. Uh, yeah, moving the pitch around almost gives like a high resonance flanger sound. So let's try um, some LFO to the pitch, maybe. And as we go lower down, you start getting these really cool rhythmic things happening because we're pushing the pitch down so low that it's becoming kind of clicks. And interestingly, even though we're not Even though we're not putting a voice into it, this is doing the job of the voice. It kind of gets this vocal quality to it. Which is really cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that little jaunt around the Micro Freak vocoder. Uh, if you did, please uh, do consider giving the video a good old thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any upcoming synth fun. I will do my very best to bring this into a stream in the next few days. So if people have particular questions they want answering or things they want me to try out in real time, uh, I'll, I'll be able to do that there. But otherwise, as always, thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye.